My first interaction with pottery forms goes way back to when I was a student at the Minya College of Fine Art in Egypt. I learned to look at forms as objects of contemplation. That appreciation of form stayed with me and I've never really imagined back then that I would be making pots. It wasn't really until I met my wife Sue, who is a sculptor. She introduced me to clay and I never looked back. Initially, I fell in love with the smoke-fired pottery that introduced me to pit firings, smoke firings, raku, and for about 10 years, my practice revolved around that. In 2009, I decided to go to the Royal College of Art to do an MA. It was a very challenging course to do, especially at mature age, having established a successful practice. It was all very stimulating and intense, which led to a huge development in a number of areas. The problem was is that I actually left with a number of interests. I didn't really allow enough time for an in-depth sort of analysis and assessment. It's very difficult to take time out to go deeper and look more objectively at some of the ideas that I was interested in. This is when I decided to approach the Arts Council of Wales and apply for one of the grants. In 2013, they gave me a Creative Wales Award, which was definitely what I needed at that stage in my career. I entitled my project An Exploration in the Language of Form and Material. The project was divided in three phases. One being my one-off hand-built ceramics, which still formed the bulk of my practice. Second was kiln cast glass, trying to take forward the forms and the ideas that I developed at the RCA. And lastly, there was also funding for trying to introduce a new strand to my practice, which is designing a range of slip cast products that can then be manufactured by somebody else. As somebody who has largely sort of worked by myself in my studio in Pembrokeshire for years, working with other people has brought a different kind of energy. People bring their own ideas, but also it brings challenges because you have to surrender control sometimes. It's something that I will continue to explore because as somebody who is interested in having a multidiscipline practice, that definitely involves other people. I made three glass kiln cast pieces whilst at the RCA, but of course I didn't have the potential to make this in my own practice because the facilities where the knowledge wasn't enough. I used some of the funding to work with Heike Brachlo, who is a fellow RCA graduate. With her technical support, I was able to realize my vision about making some glass pieces which explore the aesthetics present in my ceramic work and try to create that kind of a dialogue between ceramics and glass. With the glass, it was one of the highlights really of the project because I developed two new forms which I submitted for the glass binale. I was totally amazed on the night when it was announced that I won the main Binali prize. It's definitely given me the confidence to continue with the journey and I'm looking forward to making new work and seeing where that path takes me. The idea behind the slip cast objects or functional wear is that I think that we are all capable of different things. We have it within us to be designers, artists, makers, it's introducing the aesthetics of my work into a design body of work that is more accessible. I very much remember a project that we did at the RCA, which was at Shibon Davis Dance Studios. And this was for me the beginning, really, of working with groups. We were invited to respond to anything that happens in the space. And I looked at dancers and what happens when one dancer bursts in the middle of the stage and look at the presence of the dancer. And then another dancer comes through from the wings and another dancer. And there's a different dynamic. They each did something on their own, but they also do something different together. And there is value in all these different relationships. Hence my interest in grouping different objects or simple cylinder forms that allow me then to explore that physical presence as well as a certain palette of colors in a way that a single pot would not give me the opportunity to do that. I developed a number of these groups exploring both color and terrestrial slips 
but also in different natural clays that I mix together sometimes to create more sort of subtleties and more varied palette within these natural clays. When I look at the relationship between multiples, the repetition, the different dynamics that happens between a group of three, five, ten, it does different things. It's about sort of altering the physical space that they occupy and how that then forces us to actually look at them differently, just through their scale and dealing with a small pinch pot that you can put in the palm of your hand, that's quite intimate then you look at a multiple of 50 objects and how they define the space. You have to walk around them. You can't sort of embrace them with your hand, but you might embrace them with your eyes. What I've discovered is that you can't really put an arbitrary time on development. I think it's wonderful to have funding just to explore ideas. These are expenses, time that I wouldn't have normally been able to afford. I've always been somebody who was a firm believer in thinking through making. So having that period over two years afforded me the luxury of doing that. I made a new body of work of the individual hand-built pieces and these were successfully shown in a number of galleries. In an ideal world, we make for ourselves. We should retain that sort of state of excitement. The challenge is to maintain that balance between excitement that comes with exploration and dedicating enough time to actually develop each idea to its full potential.